If the slugger holds a special place in baseball folklore, then it stands to reason that the fruits of his labor do too. The home run has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? The sheer force, the power, the explosiveness, the majestic flight of the ball hit farther than the confines of the ballpark. You know, throughout the years, countless numbers of home runs have been hit. But it isn't always just hitting one that's important. More often, it's when you hit one that counts. The kind of home run that gives birth to a legend. And there have been a few of those, too. As a matter of fact, as a catcher, I call several. But none were ever more dramatic than the one hit on October 3rd, 1951, when the New York Giants' Bobby Thompson picked up this bat and stepped in against the Dodgers' Ralph Branca. Bobby hitting at 292. Branca throws. say this at the time I made that swing and lucky enough to hit the ball out of the park and we won uh, I never thought they'd be talking about it years later <laughs> but at the time all it meant to me was that we beat the Dodgers and I guess we had a rivalry that that uh, was second to none at least they feel that way in New York in the right place at the right time. That's what it took for Bobby Thompson to achieve immortality. And that's what it took for the Pirates' Bill Mazeroski, too. It was his good fortune to bat with a score tied in the ninth inning of the seventh game of the 1960 World Series. Al, a little while ago, when we mentioned uh, that this one, uh, in typical fashion, was going right to the wire, little did we know. With a swing and a high fly ball going deep to left, this may do it. Back to the wall goes Barry, it is. Mazeroski has hit a one nothing pitch over the left field fence at Forbes Field to win the 1960 World Series for the Pittsburgh Pirates. To be able to hit a home run to win the World Series is just something you just can't believe. And it's uh, still hard for me to explain how I felt when I, when I was rounding the bases or something like this. And again, you go back, and I can remember as a kid just walking up uh, an old dirt road and just putting myself on uh, in the last game of the World Series, and uh, the, I'm at bat, and I hit a home run, and you put yourself in that as a little kid, and you something you dream about, and it, it happening to you is just unreal. Unreal might also be the word for a home run Babe Ruth hit in the 1932 World Series, the one that led to a dispute as to whether Ruth actually called a shot or not. No, he didn't. I guess it made awfully good publicity. <clears throat> but uh, actually what happened... Uh, he was taking a lot of ribbon from the bench. And they called him, you know, big fat guy and slob and stuff like that. I remember we get it was a tough series. Both clubs riding each other, doing everything to get each other's goat. Well, I was this one particular time when I went to bat, Charlie Ruth was pitching. And the first pitch ball was a call strike. Took the uh, first strike and they got on him. He, then now he takes a second strike right down the middle. He don't even offer at it. Well, I didn't like that one either, so I let it go by. Well, I stepped out of the box, and by that time, they were over there going crazy. Well, I looked out at center field, and I tore it. I said, I'm going to hit the next pitch ball right past the flagpole. So they're on him. He just holds up his hands. That, that's only two strikes. And it was only two strikes, because the next one he hit out of sight. Well, the good Lord must have been with him. Did Ruth really call his homer? Well, that secret rest with the base. But one thing's for sure, the good Lord was with Ruth a good deal during his career. For most, those moments in the sun are few and far between. Whether it's hitting a game-winning homer or making a game-saving catch, most are fortunate if fame comes along just once in a lifetime. One wonderful moment when fate takes his hand in my lifetime I feel like a 
giant. I soar like an eagle, as though I had wings. For this is my moment, my destiny calls me. And though it may be just once in my lifetime, I'm gonna do great things. My once in a lifetime when I can explore a new and exciting land. Once in my lifetime, I feel like a giant. I soar like an eagle as though I had wings. For this is my moment, my destiny calls me. And though it may be just once in a lifetime, Quite a few here at Cooperstown, names like Ruth, DiMaggio, Mays, and joining us here today on the game's greatest, Hall of Famer Frank Robinson, a guy that I had the pleasure of knowing and the displeasure of playing against for a lot of years. Frank, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here, Tim. You hit 586 home runs in your career, 38 of those in 1956, your rookie year, and only one other rookie has ever hit that many home runs. Must have been some kind of feeling, huh? Well, it was a fun year for me because I came into a lineup at Cincinnati that had established sluggers, uh, Krasuski, Bell, Post, uh, Ed Bailey, people like that. So I just disappeared right into that lineup, and the pitchers didn't concentrate on me. They weren't worried about me, a skinny kid, a rookie, <laughs> coming in there. They were just going to throw me fastballs right down the middle, get me out, keep me off the bases in front of those big guys. And I was just very fortunate uh, to be on a ball club that hit a lot of home runs that year. As a matter of fact, we hit 221 that year. And uh, I was fortunate to hit 38. But the main thing is I wasn't trying to break that record. We were so close to maybe having a chance to win a pennant that year that uh, my, my total concentration and everyone's concentration was really on trying to win a pennant. Well, you almost won it in 1956. Five years later, you did win it. You played the Yankees in the World Series. Not only did you reach the World Series, but you won your first MVP award. That's true. That was a year that where we had no respect. A lot of people in baseball and the fans called us ragamuffins <laughs> because we were players from different teams. We got players from different teams, Gene Freeze and a lot of other players. And, uh, you know, coming into that year, uh, you know, I was in the shadow of uh, Clemente, uh, Mays, and Aaron. And what the MVP did for me, not only helped the ball club win a pennant, but it got me out of the shadow of those individuals. Uh, before, you know, everybody would mention uh, Clemente, Aaron, Mays, and Robinson. But I said, hey, I want to be mentioned in the same breath as those guys, you know, not Ann Robinson, but I want to be mentioned right with them. And that's what that year did for me, and it also helped the ball club win a pennant. Well, everyone knows teams compete against each other. Do players compete against each other? Did you go out there and compete against guys of similar stature when you played against the ball club, like an Aaron or a Mays? Oh, there's no doubt about it, Tim. And I think uh, that brought out the best in me when we play. Uh, against an Aaron and against the Mays and the top ball players on the other ball club, especially when they're home run hitters. Uh, mm -hmm. We would tell, there's an incident, uh, you know, like we were playing uh, Milwaukee one day in, uh, in Crosley Field in Cincinnati, and uh, Aaron came up his first time and hit a home run. So uh, as we were coming in to the dugout, I said to myself, well, I got to try to match that. So I, I went up and I, I did hit a home run. I wasn't trying to hit a home run, but I did hit a mm -hmm. home run. And then going back out and I said, top that, buddy. And uh, sure enough, the next time up, he had a home run. And I said, well, I guess I ought to try to do it again. And I hit another one. And uh, that, that so day we both got up, two and exactly, two at that, right? Exactly. And we wound up winning the ball game, though. And uh, that was the nice thing about it. But uh, we did get two and two at bats. And uh, it was really strange. But I, I enjoyed that competition against an Aaron, a Mays, Glamin, and those fellows, and especially me as an individual. I didn't have to get up for those guys. I, that, they just got me up. And, and it was very enjoyable. And then in 1966, in a very, very controversial move, 
you were traded to the Baltimore Orioles for Milt Pappas and became the MVP in the American League after five years before that becoming the MVP in the National League to be the only man ever to win that award in both leagues. Well, that was a very enjoyable year for me as an individual because I was playing with some outstanding ball players. Brooks Robinson, I'd heard a lot about him, but uh, after seeing him play and playing with him, I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, Boog Powell had an outstanding year. I won the Triple Crown, and uh, after the season was over, I was just waiting for the vote, and, uh, you know, it could have gone either way. It could have gone for Brooks, it could have gone for Boog, but the writers voted for me, and I was uh, very honored and very thrilled to uh, receive the award. You had such a marvelous career. Does it rankle you a bit that after 19 years as a dominant player uh, in your time, that you may be remembered as the first black manager as opposed to a player? <laughs> I hope not, Tim, but uh, it does bother me somewhat sometimes when you know, people say, well, you'll be remembered as the first black manager, and I have a tendency to say, wait a minute now, I was a pretty good ball player, not too. I hope, uh, <laughs> I hope people don't forget that, but I don't think they will. But it was, uh, it, it's, it's an experience, it's something that has to be recorded in history as the first, and when you are the first at anything, uh, no one can ever take that away from me. Frank, after all of the things that you've done in your career and all of the milestones that you've reached and all that both offensively and defensively with world championships what was the biggest thrill in your career i guess it's tough to discern huh? well not really uh, i did have an outstanding career tim and there was a lot of moments that i can reflect back on but there's no doubt in my mind just one incident stands out completely above all the others and that's being inducted into the hall of fame and that just uh put the icing on the cake and put it in the box and tied the ribbon on top of it and said you had an outstanding career well, the Hall of Fame may have packaged and put a bow on your career, and I think you've packaged and put a bow on our show. And I want to thank you for being with us. Well, thank you. Did you ever know that you were my hero? Everything that I would like to be. I can fly higher, higher than an eagle. of the game is brought to you by Wheaties, the breakfast of...